What would happen to your body if you stopped drinking soda? If you're a soda drinker on the regular diet or regular soda, occasional, what happens to the system from a doctor's perspective, physiology inside of your organs, inside of your body, when you quit that known bad habit? Number one, there's gonna be a weight loss. When you drink a sugary liquid like a soda or even a diet soda, it's putting in empty calories, but it does not add to your satiety, the feeling of fullness. That's why oftentimes soda drinkers go back to that well, to that vice multiple times a day. It doesn't fill you up, but you're taking in an incredible amount of sugar or of chemicals, we'll talk about diet soda in a moment, and it doesn't give you the full feeling. In fact, it ends up leading to significant weight gain over time, even if it is a diet version drink, because it makes you want to eat. So when you were drinking the soda, your calorie intake is going to be higher, let alone the amount of high fructose corn syrup and sugar going into the system. That's going to create fattiness on the liver. It is the number one cause of fatty liver disease, which is exploding in the world right now because of overweightness, because of obesity, primarily driven by excess soda. So you're going to lose weight almost instantly within the first week, a pound, two pounds, three pounds. I've seen joint pains and things disappear. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But number one out of the gates, the impact it has on how much you eat, how full you feel and the waistline. Now I need to re-mention number two because the more soda you drink, the more fructose you take in, unless it's a diet version, but then you're taking in chemicals. So chemicals and fructose, when they hit the liver, the body has a problem keeping up because they're so dense, they're so sugar laden, it's gotta either burn it up, which we're not moving enough to do that, then it's gotta store it. Triglycerides are gonna go through the roof, which can impact your heart health, and it's gonna start storing fat. The first place it stores it is the liver. So liver fat builds up from those chemicals, from that sugar, that's a major problem for fluid in your body, your heart, let alone your overall health because you start having your chemical detoxifier working less efficiently. Now number three, when that fatty liver starts to form, fat is gonna to start to form more around the visceral organs. Drinking soda skyrockets the amount of fat around the organs, so when you cut it out, you might not see the waistline disappear quite as fast, but from an underneath perspective, around your small intestine, large intestine, liver and heart, that fat is gonna start melting away. Visceral fat is what causes chronic disease, let alone skin fat, cutaneous fat on the surface that we don't like the look of, it's the organ fat that gets you into a lot of toxic problems. Studies have linked soda drinking directly to more visceral fat, so you're gonna start losing fat around the organs. Your blood's gonna to begin to change. Number one, you're gonna see the triglyceride levels go down. If you have a high triglyceride problem or cholesterol issue, cutting out soda, you're gonna see cholesterol levels go down. You're also gonna see insulin and blood sugar, of course, go down. Why does that matter? Well, that drives metabolic syndrome. High blood pressure, high triglycerides, high cholesterol, diabetes, heart failure. Your reduction in all of those is gonna be significant because there's gonna be way less sugar floating around in your blood. Insulin's gonna come down, which is gonna take you out of sugar storage, fat storage mode, and increase fat burning mode. Next, for every can of soda that you cut out each day, even if you can't get completely off of it, for each can, you're gonna reduce your type two diabetes risk by 1.1% shows the research. Each can is a 1% reduction. So if you're drinking five or 10 cans a day, you are increasing your risk of diabetes by 10%. So just start to narrow it down and maybe you can't quit cold turkey, but every can counts a lot when it comes to a huge disease killer of type two diabetes in this world. Number six, your energy and your nutrient content is gonna go up. You're not having those sugary crashes that happen with taking in that much sugar and soda is an anti-nutrient. So not only does it not provide you any nutrients, it takes up the space of other ones. Now you're gonna be able to absorb more nutrients into your body. What's that gonna to do to your energy? What's that gonna to do to the health of your organs? What's that gonna to do to your cell production and the aging look of your body? Speaking of the aging look to the body and the organ health, specifically your heart is gonna be impacted. Studies show that but just reducing one can a day is gonna have a 20% reduction in heart disease long-term, especially in men. 40,000 person study, it was men, done in this study, they increased their heart disease risk by 20% by just one sugary drink, one can of soda each day. A 20% reduction for every can you cut out. 
You can do this. Here's a little more incentive. Another massive study, 60,000 adults. If you drank two or more sodas a day, your cancer risk was 87% higher in the pancreas. It's so hard on the insulin, on the blood sugar controller of your pancreas, 87% increased risk. So if you cut out two cans of soda a day, you are lowering your pancreatic cancer risk by 87%. Your joints are gonna thank you. Inflammation goes down with the less sugar that you put into your system. However, gout tied to acid produced in the body, very painful, hurts, big toe, joints around the system. So much acid builds up in the body. A huge source of acid is soda. So soda drinkers have a 75% increased chance of having gout. So when you cut out soda and stop drinking it, your risk of gout goes down 75%, that's gonna save you a lot of pain. And finally, smile. I know you might not wanna cut out the habit, however, by reducing the amount of soda you drink has a significant impact on the health of your teeth. It decays away the teeth, the enamel, and the protective layers of it because of its acidity, which makes for a lot of cavities long-term, a lot of dental work, and you just can't get that back. You can't get that restored. You can get implants, but it's never the same again. Protecting your smile, protecting your teeth goes significantly up when you cut out the soda. Now, however, this is not an easy job because studies have proven that soda can be as addictive as drugs to the brain. There's a physical addiction and the act of knowing you're gonna do it, the dopamine hit that starts to hit, knowing you're gonna have the next one. So there's a very addictive nature to it. So you have to replace your routine. You have to disconnect the neural pathways that give you that happiness, reaching for that Coke or that Pepsi or that Mountain Dew. You need something else to reach for. So one, you may just say, well, I'm gonna cut out all the sugar because I wanna go diet soda. Bad idea. The chemicals in diet soda actually have been proven to increase weight gain. So you gain more weight by drinking skinny or diet versions of things. Those chemicals, those nutrient sweets and the artificial sweeteners in them are really hard on gut health. Destroys the microbiome, which is gonna make your gut leaky. Over time, that's gonna mean more chemicals and more toxins in your bloodstream, which is the primary driver of autoimmune diseases. So if you have a lupus, a thyroid autoimmune condition, an itis, arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis in your body, the last thing you would want to drink is a diet version of a soda. Those sodas are still incredibly hard on the teeth because of the acid content and the chemical content. They increase the risk of headaches. So a lot of people dealing with migraine headaches or headaches in general, because of those chemicals in there, they build up in the system and they trigger neurological responses. Diet sodas are also harmful on your bones. One study of 17,000 people showed that drinking diet soda regularly decreased bone density and increased fracture risk. So if you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, those are gonna get better by cutting out the diet soda. Diet sodas still have the direct link to heart disease risk. In fact, drinking two or more per day increases your heart disease risk. So cutting out the diet soda is gonna be heart healthy and decrease that risk. And finally, you cut out all the sugar when you drink diet soda, but you add in oftentimes aspartame. Aspartame, there's a lot of research mounting against it. These artificial sweeteners, what it does to our bodies, the harm from it, Number one out of the gates, it creates immune damage and oxidative stress. That's gonna result in extra inflammation being in your body. We talked about what it does to the joints and it starts to destroy the gut microbiome. That's gonna have a direct impact on your mood. In fact, three prominent studies show that the higher amounts of aspartame, diet soda, that goes into your diet, higher amount of depression that you experience. Cutting out diet sodas, it's gonna make you happier. The chemical mix up of aspartame actually can accumulate in the blood and it increases risk of hereditary blood disorders because of those chemicals just floating around the system. It's also really hard on the liver. So cleaner blood, cleaner liver when you're cutting out these diet sodas. If that wasn't enough, there's a 2012 study that linked diet sodas directly to non-Hopkins lymphoma, which obviously involving the blood, the white blood cells, the inflammation in the system, it just makes the system go haywire because these chemicals are so powerful. Seizures are linked to it. Obviously we talked about headaches being linked to it. Fibromyalgia has been linked to it. So by cutting out one simple thing, soda and diet soda, you're reducing so many different chronic diseases. So if you've hooked on soda, You've made the switch to diet soda. Hopefully I've talked to you about the benefits of breaking that habit. What can you drink? What can you replace it with? Going cold turkey can be extremely addictive. In fact, studies show that it can be addictive as drugs, a diet soda or a soda. Physically you have an addiction, you have a neural pathway of that habit, that dopamine hit. 
getting excited thinking about your Pepsi or Mountain Dew or your Coca-Cola that you're gonna go grab. So there's a neural pathway etched into your brain for that dopamine hit like a drug. And it's, you have that pathway entrenched, ingrained into your daily activity. How do we begin to break it? What are some other drinks that might suffice the taste and the habit so you don't it kind of eases the pain of coming off of this for so many people that are addicted to it. This is a simple Amazon store link. And so my wife and I, the beautiful nurse Living Good, put together just like simple drinks that we would maybe have in our house or would consider. We don't make any of these, but here's some ones that you might look at for those that you like something added to your water. Uh, this is a stevia based one that you could look. There's a couple of teas on here. Uh, there's a uh, Olipop, and this is one that our we let our kids have. It's got some good probiotics, got kind of a sparkliness to it, kind of got a soda feel to it. So you may try one of those out. Um, we do a lot of sparkling water. Spindrift is one of our favorites. And so it's got you know a variety of different tastes. You can kind of suffice that something different than water. Water is obviously gonna be the number one. And if we keep going down here, Poppies is sort of a sparkling prebiotic soda. So you're getting some benefit to the gut as opposed to taking away from it. And then finally, Zevia. And so Zevia is a stevia sweet. And if you're sensitive to stevia, then this might not be a go no go, but I like this a lot better from a perspective of choosing one of these as opposed to a soda, sweetened with stevia. You're not gonna have the calories, it's non-GMO, so we're not getting that impact. This might be a decent solution for helping you to get off the soda, the diet soda, if you're not into just like coffees, teas. Um, but there's a few options that I wanted to give you, like what can you have instead? So check out a Zevia, check out an Olipop, check out a Poppy, reach for a sparkling water. You can do this. You can break this addiction, it is a habit but you gotta get to the roots of it. You can't just cut a branch off the tree. You gotta get, dig down into the roots of why so addicted to that. What's the feeling it gives you? What is it sufficing? It is certainly taking significant amounts away from your health, whether it's regular or diet, and you can break that habit. It is well worth it with all the benefits of when you stop drinking soda. So if you need more help with this, I'll put that Amazon link below so you can just see some examples. I even put uh, in here a video to go to the grocery store to walk through drinks with you. We'll actually pull them off the shelf and show them some of the benefits to give you more options to break this. And finally, if you wanna learn more about like, well, what if I cut out other foods in my diet? What does it do? Like meat or even only eating meat, or I got a whole series of these and I put that video right here for you. Enjoy.